Breaking news tonight, an arrest and the disappearance of a local teen, a trail of blood splatter and twisted stories leading deputies to a suspect. Good evening, I'm Jim Payne. I'm Meredith McDonough. 16-year-old Alexandra Sherry disappeared from her home in the Hawthorne Grove Apartments Monday. Her mother's boyfriend, Sunel St. Simone, has been arrested for giving false information to authorities. West News' Michelle Meredith is live at the Orange County Sheriff's Office. And Michelle, a plea directly from the sheriff for help. Well, he said time is of the essence. It's been over 48 hours, and the girl still has not been found. Senyel St. Simon has been arrested on charges that he gave false information to deputies and tried to destroy evidence. On Monday, according to family members, the girl's mother knew something was wrong before she got home. When my sister picked him up from work, he did not, he was trying to persuade her not to go home. And my sister was like, we have to go home. But when my sister got to the house with him, he didn't want to go in the house. According to their arrest affidavit, when they went inside, the mother found that her daughter, 16-year-old Alexandria Sherry, was gone. The girl's mother found blood in her apartment, found blood on the girl's teddy bear, found the girl's personal belongings missing, the sheets stripped, and she found man's underwear placed under her daughter's bed, and it smelled like bleach. The worst case scenario is that uh, this individual could have been seriously injured. We, we could be looking at a homicide. That's not what we're saying at this time, but that's the worst case scenario. The arrest affidavit spells it out, says because of the amount of excessive blood in the apartment, investigators fear they're dealing with either foul play or serious injury. In a news conference today, detectives asked for help. If you have seen this black Pontiac around, they'd like to know when and where. Investigators say St. Simon borrowed it from his uncle. A 16-year-old girl missing since Monday. Her family desperate and police fearing the worst. Yeah, just today, authorities discovering a body, but they're not saying for sure if it's Alexandria Cherie. The discovery coming in a wooded area just off of I-4 in Osceola County, nearly 30 miles away from her home in Ocoee. Let's get right to our Carson Chambers, live near where that body was discovered today. Carson. <laughs> Well, we know that maintenance crews actually discovered the body around 9.36 a.m. this morning. And I can tell you I have seen CSI techs in and out of these very deep woods all afternoon. You can see some of the crews just behind us taking in ladders, taking out paper evidence bags. The question is, is this the missing 16-year-old's body? We have located a uh, body. 16-year-old Alexander Shari has been missing now for almost a week. We have not made a positive identification again. I want to stress that. But we do have our investigators with the family. Tonight, her family is waiting to find out whether or not the female body discovered in a deeply wooded area near the Polk Osceola County line is Alexandria or someone else. We're going to go very slowly, very methodically, in order to try and make sure that we preserve all of the evidence that is available to us here in this field. The field, thick with palmettos, right off busy State Road 532, is 30 miles from where Shari disappeared from her family's apartment on Monday. Investigators have been scouring rural areas in Polk, Osceola, and Orange counties for days as the teen's family gathered, hoping for a miracle. I don't know where my cousin is. <laughs> But there aren't many encouraging signs in the teen's disappearance. Her mother's live-in boyfriend is in jail. Arrested earlier this week for misleading investigators. Deputies say Sanyal St. Simon lied about cleaning up Alexandria's room and his whereabouts when she disappeared. In her bedroom, they say they found a blood-soaked teddy bear and male underwear soaked in bleach. Our investigators have talked to him throughout the past several days. They will continue to do so as appropriate. Alexandria Shiri had been missing since Monday. Search teams began combing an area near the Osceola Polk County line on Thursday, and yesterday they discovered a body now identified as Shiri. As her family mourns, the prime suspect in her death, Sinel St. Simon, remains in the Orange County Jail on two lesser charges. West 2's Matt Grant is live outside Shiri's apartment complex with the breaking details tonight. Matt. Well, we're in front of the apartment where Cherie was uh, last seen on Monday morning. Now, there is a little bit of confusion because the family says that they were told that the body that was discovered yesterday was 98% that of Sherry's. But the sheriff's office uh, released a statement saying that no positive identification has been made.
At the apartment complex where 16-year-old Alex Sherry went missing Monday, her uncle broke the news. And the body that was found was 98% was my niece of Alexandra Sherry. <laughs> The weight of those words, too much for Ray Joseph, who broke down sobbing. According to Joseph, law enforcement notified the family late Saturday that the body found Friday near the Osceola Polk County line was in fact Alex's. It's the same location where her cell phone last pinged. Joseph thanked detectives for their work and the community for their support. I want to say thank you to the city of Orlando. Um, I want to thank the people that came out to support. Um, the people that pray for us. In this just released family photo, you can see Alex beaming from ear to ear. The picture was taken Sunday around 5.30, less than 15 hours before she was last seen alive. Joseph had taken his niece shopping, saying she was happy and full of life. Now he's pleading for justice. We need a man that's responsible for Alex to stay behind bar, and it is St. Simon. He's referring to the boyfriend of Alex's mother, Sanel St. Simone. He's been uncooperative with investigators and remains behind bars, the only suspect in this case. According to Joseph, Alex told a cousin she was afraid to be left alone with him, calling him creepy. He's a coward. He's a monster. Joseph says the family's in disbelief, grieving the loss of a girl with a big smile who was taken too soon. I don't know what to feel right now. It's very devastating. And take a look. Here is the statement that the sheriff's office just released to us. They say in part, an autopsy was conducted and the results have not yielded a positive identification. The medical examiner's office will exhaust additional efforts to complete this grim task. In the meantime, uh, sheriff's office investigators will move forward with their tireless efforts as if the recovered body is that of Alexandria Sherry. Uh, we have briefed the family as they go through this agonizing wait. Our thoughts and prayers are with them at this difficult time, but a positive identification has not been made. Newly released court documents suggest that El St. Simone mapped out the murder of his longtime girlfriend's 16-year-old daughter, Alexandria Cherie. West News Matt Grant has been digging through the documents in the July murder. So, Matt, what did you find? Well, Meredith, the documents accuse St. Simone of plotting to kill Ag Alexandria Cherie, and we're getting an early look at the evidence the state will use to build their case. In his own handwriting, Sinel St. Simone says he was at work the day his girlfriend's daughter, 16 year old Alexandria Sherry, went missing. But according to newly released documents, St. Simone left work early, complaining of intense knee pain, a ruse, investigators say, to carry out the premeditated murder of Alexandria, which investigators say St. Simone began planning three days before her death by asking to borrow a vehicle used during the murder. Investigators say St. Simone returned to the Hawthorne Hills Place apartments where he beat Alexandria to death before dumping her body in a remote wooded area along the Osceola Polk County line. A newly released 48-page Orange County Sheriff's Office investigative report now sheds new light on the case, including evidence against St. Simone, like the fact Alexandria's blood was found on his clothing and in the car he borrowed from his uncle on the day she disappeared. Investigators say St. Simone poured bleach on the scene and staged her bedroom to make it appear as if she ran away. The report says St. Simone initially suggested Alexandria might have moved out, but denied knowing where she was, adding, he was not curious like other people, and he does not like to get into other people's business. Under questioning, St. Simone repeatedly changed his story, first saying he never left work early. When confronted with statements from co-workers that he left around 9.30 because of knee pain, he changed his story, saying he spent the day at a fast food restaurant. When told by deputies they would check the surveillance, he changed his story a third time, saying he went for a walk, even though he supposedly was suffering from extreme knee pain. When investigators told St. Simone they overheard him telling his uncle by phone to lie about the fact he borrowed his car, the same car Alexandria's blood was found in, the report says St. Simone became highly stressed and began yelling. And St. Simone is charged with first-degree murder in the death of Alexandria Sherry, who would have turned 17 a little over a week ago. New court documents have been released in the murder of Alexandria Cherie. The body of the 16-year-old was found this August in the woods by the Osceola Polk County line. The man who had been the longtime boyfriend of the girl's mother, Snell St. Simone, will stand trial for her murder. West News Michelle Meredith is live at the Orange County Sheriff's Office. And Michelle, in these documents, we get a feel for what life was like in the apartment that St. Simone shared with Alex, her brother, and their mother. 
Well, according to the report, the family was on high alert on orders to never let Alex be alone with St. Simone, even though he lived with them. In newly released court documents, we learn more about the condition of Alex Cherie's body when it was found near the Osceola Polk County line the first day of August. A forensic report says the body was discovered with what appeared to be a shirt around the victim's neck, that the victim was wearing either a pair of shorts or underwear, and the body was otherwise exposed, revealing a belly button ring with a pink gem. Even though the 16-year-old had only been missing for about five days when the body was located, the report said it was heavily decomposed with insect and animal activity. Her lower jawbone was located on the ground a couple of feet away from the body. The forensic report also says investigators found a trail of shoe tracks on the scene. In an interview with Alex's 19-year-old brother, Fonzo Sherry, investigators learned more about the family dynamics, how they did not hang out together much, ate meals separately in our rooms because of an incident in 2013 in which Sanel St. Simone, the boyfriend of the girl's mother, was accused of trying to molest Alex. After that, Alex's brother said they were told, never leave her alone with him. Why do you think... Your sister then kept St. Simone in the house. I mean, there could have been a lot of reasons. It could have been love. It could have been security blanket. It could have been a lot of things. I'm not sure of it. According to investigators, on July 20th, Alex was left home alone. They say St. Simone left work, returned to the apartment, murdered her, and then dumped her body at the Osceola Polk County line. Sunel St. Simone is accused of killing his girlfriend's daughter in July of 2014. Channel 9 Janine Reyes was in the courtroom this afternoon. Janine now live with us. And Janine, the case hasn't even gone to trial, but the defense was trying to take death off the table. Yeah, Mark, Keith Lloyd, Aramis Ayala, and the governor all came up in the defense's arguments today as they tried to remove the death penalty as an option in this case. But tonight, as both sides prepare for trial sometime early next year, the death penalty is still an option. My client's life is literally on the line here. Defense attorneys made it clear why they filed motions to remove Brad King from Sunel St. Simone's case, saying so far, every case King is handling with their office has been pursued as a death penalty case. Essentially what the governor has done is stepped in and stripped away all prosecutorial discretion from Ms. Ayala. St. Simone is accused of killing his girlfriend's 16-year-old daughter in 2014. Prosecutors say he used this car in the crime. His attorney today argued Florida Statute 2714, the statute the governor used to appoint Brad King to potential death penalty cases, is unconstitutional. They simply gave me an executive order that says fulfill your obligation under the law. I made all of the decisions. The court does not have the factual uh, basis in order to grant the petition based on what I have as record in this matter, so I'm going to deny the motion at this point. He also denied a motion to take death penalty off the table based on King not filing aggravating factors in time. This case has actually been in the hands of three state attorneys now. Jeff Ashton pursued death in this case. Ayala overturned it, then King overturned her decision. Strike. Uh, the notice of no death penalty in this matter and deny the motion to prohibit the death penalty as punishment. Which means death is still an option if St. Simone is convicted of killing 16-year-old Alexandria Sherry. And defense attorneys also tried getting some video evidence thrown out in this case. That streetlight video showing a car driving around. Defense attorneys argued that you can't tell for sure if it is the suspect driving that car, but the judge said that should be up to a jury to decide, so that video could still very well be shown in this trial. The man accused of killing his girlfriend's daughter nearly four years ago is finally on trial this afternoon. Prosecutors are painting him as a premeditated killer with secrets to hide. And the defense says it's all an unfair rush to judgment. Just a few minutes ago, the mother of the victim, 16-year-old Alexandria Cherry, took the stand. The testimony comes as both sides wrapped up their opening statements. Channel 9's Field Sutton was in the courtroom this morning. And Field, we are expecting at least a week of testimony in this case. That's the tentative plan that I'm hearing. Five full days of testimony planned from the prosecution. We don't know exactly what the defense is going to have yet, but of course anything can take longer once the trial gets going. Now, St. Simon himself is listening to all this through his interpreter. He's originally from Haiti, and there's some question as to how much English he can actually speak. 
We learned this morning there's a police interrogation tape that does not look good for him, according to prosecutors. Of course, it's all in how you spin it. The defense claims the crux of that video is that St. Simon repeatedly denied killing Cherry. But they also claim he didn't know what he was go what was going on during that interrogation because of the language barrier. We got an overview today of the witnesses who are going to come in and talk about Cherry's defensive wounds and also about the effort to cover up her murder. He repeatedly attempted to mislead law enforcement officers who were frantically searching for a missing juvenile, not knowing they should have been conducting a homicide investigation. There was a I'll submit to a bunch of judgment because there's a lot of pressure on the police to find the suspect to find somebody who did it. Well, just in the last few minutes, Cherry's mom took the stand. Her name, Rosalie Joseph, and her testimony has certainly been emotional.